Hey everybody, welcome to Tech for Psych, where we combine the latest in neurotechnology with ancient wisdom to supercharge your brain. I'm Dr. Cody Rawl, your medical doctor. Confidant. You know what? Heart to heart. For some reason, I got up at like 4 a.m. this morning and went to the gym, and I still haven't eaten anything this morning, so you know that feeling when you feel like you have a low blood sugar? I think I should just maybe like check mine. It's actually not that low, but I'm still gonna get something to eat. Ah, that's better. This thing's delicious. This is my patented <laughs> peanut butter banana Cody shake that I drink every morning. So uh, I'm gonna enjoy this. But before I do, I wanna make sure that I uh, track how well my blood sugar actually responds to it. All right, now I actually get to drink this thing. So I can't think of a better way to build a solid base for using these different types of neurotechnology devices to enhance our brains through meditation than having a great control over exercise, but most importantly, diet. Diet is the fuel that allows your brain to function the best way possible. And this app is amazing. It gives you a closed feedback loop on your diet so that you can see your blood sugar levels throughout time. Now, continuous blood glucose monitoring has been around for a couple of years now, but never before has it been available to biohackers like us that are interested in optimizing our bodies for health and wellness. Obviously, people with diabetes could be using this and are using it right now too, but this has become more mainstream as we become more comfortable with wearables. We can download the information from the hardware into our smartphones and use apps like Levels has so expertly designed so that we can get that information that is necessary for us to understand our diets that much more intensely, accurately, so that we can get our diets optimized for top brain performance, for memory, for concentration, for our emotional control throughout the day. Have you ever ate a meal and just crashed afterwards after the after a lunch and just went back to work or to school and you were just falling asleep in your seat? That's something that this app can help you with. It can help you get through those food choices that are causing you to crash in midday and just give you unbelievable energy so that you can really accomplish what you want to during the day. So Levels is designing the business structure and the software available so that us biohackers can take advantage of hardware that's actually been around for a couple of years and proven to be safe. Um, under this patch, under the Levels patch, is actually the Freestyle Libra from Abbott. And it just uses this little filament that goes into your skin to track blood glucose levels. And you can get that in real time on your phone and track it throughout the day. I can't get over how exciting this is. This is really gonna take off in mainstream once become more available. So I'll show you how to put it on. We'll take a look at the hardware and the software, and then I'll take you through my journey over the last month and taking a look at my food. Okay, so you actually will download both the LibreLink Freestyle app and the Levels app, and there are instructions for applying the sensor on both of those applications. First, you'll use an alcohol swab provided in the box to sterilize your skin, and then you can go about unpackaging the applicator. First, you take the cap off, which reveals the connector between the applicator and the continuous glucose monitor, or CGM. Then you line up the two properly and press down on a hard surface to attach the applicator to the CGM. Press down firmly until it comes to a stop. And finally, you hold it to your arm and press down firmly. Ideally, you want to put it in a stable area without too much muscle or movement. I chose right behind the top of my tricep on my upper arm. And the applicator actually has a small needle that goes in and out of your arm very rapidly and quickly places the soft filament in the tissue of your arm for sensing. All right, ready? Here we go. I didn't feel anything. And there it is in my arm. Again, the needle retracts out and does not stay in your arm, but the soft filament does, and that's what actually does the sensing. When placing this, I literally felt nothing. The only discomfort that I actually had was from the adhesive from the patch, but I pretty much forgot about having it on most of the time. 
So I'm figuring this out in real time and it's not too hard, but there is a little bit of a barrier in doing it the first time. So that'll be interesting for people going forward. I think that people that are interested in biohacking can definitely figure this out if they're motivated enough to make it happen. If people with diabetes are willing to figure out how to apply these things in order for their own health, I think that for our general overall well-being, especially if you're doing dieting or trying to figure out your blood glucose levels throughout the day in order to optimize your performance, people will definitely be able to figure this out. I've got the levels patch that I can put over it to protect it. <laughs> so I've been doing intermittent fasting for a couple of years now and I actually really enjoy it. It helps restrict my caloric intake to keep my weight under control and also gives me consistent energy throughout the day if I try to stick with foods with low glycemic index like within the ketogenic diet. I generally have a peanut butter banana shake with some protein powder at around 9.30 in the morning, which is around 500 calories. Then I tend to have a big dinner at around 5.30 in the afternoon, which is around 1,300 calories. Common dinners for me are chicken and rice, steak and rice. I also like to include greens like asparagus or Brussels sprouts and enjoy some baked plantains on the side as well. A few times a week, we will order out and get Indian food, Colombian food, or even just a burger from the local brewery. So I was curious to see how the peanut butter banana shake would do since it's my main go-to during the day. I generally feel like my energy levels are consistent throughout the morning, so I had a feeling it would score pretty well. So actually it was exciting to see it got an eight, which is great. You want your blood sugar to be between that sweet spot of 70 to 110 milligrams deciliter. And the Levels app tracks your blood sugar rise and fall after the meal and gives you a score from zero to 10 based on those levels. The higher the score, the better the food. To be honest, my evening meals look like a mess on the Levels app. So this is where you can start picking apart your diet ingredient by ingredient to figure out what you best respond to. People really react to foods differently. For example, there was a famous study that showed that people had totally opposite reactions between bananas and cookies. Your body might actually be more optimized to process fruit, oatmeal, rice, potatoes, or any other number of foods differently than other people. What we are seeing there is there's truly no one-size-fits-all diet, and the only way to know what works specifically for you is to test using devices like this and software like Levels. So what I started doing is eating one serving of different foods in the morning before doing my peanut butter banana shake to see how my body would respond to it. Now you have to make sure that you give the app two to three hours after eating the meal so that it has enough time for your blood sugar to spike, come back down to normal, and be within the normal range for two hours so that it can give you your isolated score for the food that you ate. Obviously, if you eat other foods within that time window, that will affect your blood glucose levels too, and you will get an inaccurate reading on that specific food. So I'm gonna do more isolated testing in future videos, but this is what I found so far. I do pretty well with bananas in general and got a score of seven with just a regular banana. Notice that this is a point lower than the whole shake that I drink daily. This is likely because the fat content in the peanut butter stabilizes my blood sugar rise and fall better than just straight fructose from an isolated banana. And you'll find this a lot. There's different things that affect the blood sugar reaction to foods, like have you exercised recently? Did you eat it with fat? And various other factors that will actually affect your blood sugar levels throughout the day. So it's incredibly interesting. There's plenty of articles on this in the Levels app to help educate you on the different effects of different various activities. So surprisingly enough, I handle apples really well with a score of nine. And then I dove into the dangerous stuff. I tried an oatmeal raisin cookie one morning that was 240 calories. And oh my gosh, look at how it spiked my blood sugar and gave me a score of six. And not only that, it actually left me hypoglycemic, meaning low blood sugar, after the spike and a dive downwards it made me feel like I lost focus and felt nauseous all morning. It was terrible. I can't even stand seeing someone eat a donut first thing in the morning and just knowing that their blood sugar is going through a roller coaster and then they wonder why they're irritable and not functioning at their best later in the morning. There was a heartbreaker for me. I generally like to eat popcorn in the evenings a couple of times a week, but when I tried the Smart Pop brand that I like, it totally betrayed me. The score was a five and it was even worse than the cookie. I suppose it's all the simple carbs that just made my blood sugar spike and get a terrible score. 
But the good thing is now I know that if I'm hungry after dinner, I should eat apples as a snack rather than popcorn. So you see how that works? It really breaks things down for you so that you can understand what you best react to so that you have less rise and fall blood sugar levels. And, and believe it or not, these rise and falls of blood sugar levels actually make you hungrier afterwards. So having a more stable, consistent blood sugar will actually make you less hungry during the day when you're doing things like caloric restriction for losing weight or maintaining the weight that you're already at. So overall, this is an incredible device. I would say that you definitely should look into getting one if you wanna lose weight, optimize your diet, or just improve your cognition overall. We know that having stable blood glucose levels improves your insulin sensitivity, which is linked to long lasting health and wellness. We know that high blood sugar levels really damage blood vessels all over your body and in your central nervous system. They accelerate cardiovascular disease, diabetes, aging, and even Alzheimer's disease. All right, so that's everything for this video. I'm gonna have another one coming out in a series in which I try to break down my dinners and do a little bit better job there and also some uh, challenges along the way of applying this technology. So I think that's gonna be really good to go over. And it just, this is a really important one, guys. I really hope you feel like this is helpful because if you think about the amount of damage that uh, high blood sugar can do to your central nervous system, to your body over time, we're talking about longevity here. We know that high blood sugar levels lead to less ability to think critically, to focus, to have good memory, to meditate on a higher level. So having this ability to control your blood sugar levels is going to lead to health, longevity, and also improve your cognition, which is going to be very valuable for you moving forward. If you're interested, take a look at www levelshealth.com. I hope you get one soon. And uh, this is Dr. Cody Rall with Tech for Psych. Talk to you next time.